everybody, it's Ann Kaplan from Mommy, your mama resource from conception to college, wherever you are in your momming journey, we are here for you. And this week, the theme in the group is gender. And uh, yesterday, I hope you tuned in, I had a really special broadcast where I actually got to share my broadcast with Erin Parisi, and she shared with us her experience um, growing up as a TG woman and um, her amazing um, experience uh, tr transitioning and starting her awesome um, transcending organization and all this stuff and such incredible advice and wisdom um, when it comes to parenting came out of that um, conversation. But today is Wednesday. It's my baby mama day. It's my day when I talk to all of you guys out there who are pregnant, getting ready to have a baby, dealing with immediate postpartum things. And when it comes to gender, what I really wanted to talk about for birth and pregnancy topic is um, the feeling that we really want, and some of us have this feeling that we really want um, a specific gender when we're pregnant. We're really hoping for a girl or really hoping for a boy. And um, <clears throat> I just wanna say two messages about that. First of all, a little bit about my story. I was obsessed with having a daughter my entire life, even before when I was like still a toddler and just playing house. I always knew I was gonna be a mom and I always wanted to have daughters. I had all sisters. I just didn't feel like I related to boys. I didn't know how to be a mom to boys and all of that stuff. And for all four of my pregnancies, I was hoping for a girl with every single one of them. And my first birth was a boy and we didn't find out the gender. And when I got pregnant the second time, we didn't know we were gonna be having four kids. I thought we were gonna be two and no more kids. And I just knew that I needed to know if this baby was a girl or a boy before it was born so that if it was a boy, I could kind of have my little temper tantrum about it before he arrived and be ready to show up for him like a really good mom by the time he got here. And I'm glad that I did that because our second kid was also a boy. <laughs> and um, that's exactly what happened. I was really, really sad that I, when I found out I was having another boy, sobbing in the ultrasound room, crying for like days. I didn't even talk to anybody. I just felt really sad and sorry for myself that I was having a boy. And then I moved on, and by the time River was born, the first thought I had when he came out of me was, I can't believe I ever wanted him to be anything different than what he is. He is perfect, he's amazing. And, you know, that's it, I never looked back. Um, so what are the lessons I wanna share with you guys from that experience and from my experience working with pregnant moms who also have um, preferences? You guys, here's the thing. I know that we all feel guilty, and myself included. One of the reasons I didn't talk to anybody when I found out River was a boy was because I felt embarrassed about how sad I was. So we all have this feeling that we shouldn't have an opinion. We should just be happy and grateful and, and appreciative of how blessed we are to have a healthy pregnancy and give birth to a healthy baby. And then when we have these feelings of, well, but I really would have liked this or I had always hoped for this for myself, we feel guilty about it. So my first lesson to you is to understand that we all have hopes and dreams and visions about our lives as mothers, and that's not wrong. It's okay. It's okay if you had a vision um, of your birth or your time as a mother that involved having a daughter or having a son and you don't have that, like it's okay to want those things and it's okay to be disappointed when you don't get them. And the truth is, whenever I work with parents, whether it's talking about gender or talking about anything else that they're hoping for when it comes to birth and parenting, um, the shaming yourself about something you are hoping for or a deep desire that you have doesn't make that desire or hope go away. All it does is increase your shame and your inability to deal with it and move on and have healing. So my first advice to you is recognize that it's normal to have a hope or a dream and be okay with feeling sad about it if you don't get what you want. It's okay. In this society, we have such a hard time holding two kind of conflicting feelings and ideas at the same time. Like you can, po it is totally possible for you to be so, so, so happy and grateful and appreciative of this healthy pregnancy and birth and be kind of disappointed that you didn't get the exact thing that you had envisioned for yourself. You can do both of those things. Whether the outcome has to do with gender, whether the outcome has to do with how your birth went down or when you got pregnant or whatever, even like who the father is. <laughs> 
all of those things, it's okay for us to have those two feelings of loving our child so much and being so grateful and recognizing our blessing and still mourning the loss of something else that we didn't get. It's okay. So that's my first thing for you. Let yourself grieve. Give yourself those couple of days or that whatever process you need to get to a place of healing about it and be ready to show up for this child the way that um, he or she deserves from you when they are born. So that's my second piece of advice. So first piece of advice is recognize it's normal and allow it. Just allow it to be. And then my second piece of advice is then put on your big girl pants <laughs> and get ready to have this baby and rock it. And if you really do go through the healing process and the recognition and the allowing of um, your uh, complete and full range of emotions about the birth that you're having, when that baby gets here, you really will be ready to receive it with all of the love and compassion and embracing that air, that baby deserves. And that's exactly what happened with my son, River. The second he was born, all worries and sadness and regret that he wasn't a girl completely left my mind. And River has been the transformational person in my life that he probably doesn't even realize. And most of our kids don't realize how important they are to us. And, and, um, you know, and, and now as a parent with four kids and only one of them is a girl, I look at my family and I realize like it couldn't have happened any other way and it's exactly what it was meant to be and I couldn't have been the mother that I am if it had been a different way. And the truth is I was not ready to parent a girl when my first two kids were born. I was not. And I could even argue that I wasn't ready to parent a girl when my daughter was born. <laughs> so I don't know how many of you have um, felt a desire for a specific gender baby, or if you felt a desire or a regret to find out which what you're having. But um, I'm curious to know how many of you have felt that way and want to admit it. <laughs> And, and what feelings also came along with that? Because I know for me, there was a lot of shame and guilt because I knew I should have just be grateful. So thank you guys so much. I hope this resonates with you. And I um, can't wait to talk to you guys again tomorrow. Tomorrow I'll be talking to you guys about how to really approach our parenting dynamics with openness and um and love and compassion for our kids, whatever circumstance and experimental phase they might be in with their gender. Love you guys so much. Talk to you soon. Bye.